within the last week or so, both uh, Leland Melvin and Mae Jemison have made very prominent statements um, with regard to you know, current issues facing people of color, um, both in STEM and in space and just in general. I'm not sure if you've seen those statements, um, but I'm curious kind of also, you know, if you've seen the statements, but also how how you might respond, you know, to issues pertaining to people, particularly in that sector. Um, yeah. I mean, Leland Leland literally recorded um, a video on him speaking on the subject from the Cape um, in the yeah. middle of a, a launch delay. And so it's all of these coinciding, colliding circumstances that it that I'm sure is very complicated for him. Yeah, no, I, I applaud what they've done. Uh, you know, a good friend of mine, uh, Lieutenant General Vincent Stewart, who just retired, not just retired, but recently retired from the Marine Corps, who was the commander at the Defense Intelligence uh, Agency for a while. And, um, you know, he spoke out this morning. There was an op-ed from him about uh, the experiences that he had growing up and then coming into the Marine Corps. So I think it's, I think it's very important for people in our position, people of color uh, and women, to speak out but I think what is most important is for people like you, for, for um, white leaders. Um, it ought to start with the president. Um, those are the, you know, this is not a, the, the systemic problem with racism in the United States is not something that started this year or last year or 10 years ago. I mean, this is, this is what our nation was founded on and, and, and people need to realize that. I, I saw a, a young lady in a demonstration. I, I don't think it was in Washington, D.C., but it was several days ago. And she was saying the system isn't broken. This is the system. This is the way the system was designed. And so if we really want to solve these problems, we've got to go back. And uh, lawmakers today have to pretend that they're the Continental Congress and they want to and they want to make this country the way that it really ought to be. People uh, people like to say, you know, this isn't who we are. Well, it is who we are. We are a nation that, uh, that has discriminated against people from our very beginning. We have trampled on women from the very beginning. You know, how long have you had the right to vote as a female? Uh, why weren't you able to vote when the nation was founded? You know, why was I three-fifths of a human being? Those things, that is the nation that, that, that we live in, and this is who we are, and we don't like it now that we, you know, now that we're, when we look in the mirror, uh, we're looking at something we don't like. Well, that is the nation that we are, and it's up to every single one of us to change it. So, so I call on my white brothers and sisters and tell them uh, everything you want me to say or you like Leland or May saying, you ought to be saying it. So that would, uh, that would be my advice to anybody who's in a leadership position today, no matter what they are, color or creed or race or religion they are. Absolutely. Um, I think that a lot of people think of astronauts, you know, like yourself, like May, like Leland, and they think, you know, astronauts are, you know, superheroes because, you know, yeah. they're these untouchable, you know, rock star celebrities that, but May Jemison, even after retiring as an astronaut and being all over the media as this, you know, unbelievable groundbreaking astronaut, uh, faced police brutality and violence, um, you know, and I'm, I'm curious, kind of what your response is to that and people thinking that just because you've reached that level, you no longer face it. Um, and I guess on that same note, I'm also curious if you have any stories of your own to share. No, I, I don't, you know, I don't have any stories that are any different from anybody else's. And um, uh, the, the being a, a person of color, being a black man in America means that that every single day I go through what uh, what all of us do. And I could walk out of my apartment right here in Crystal City, Virginia, you know, Northern Virginia today, and I could have the same thing happen to me that that uh, happened to George Floyd. It, it, that's just a fact of life. Um, the fact that the police officer in Galveston, Texas, didn't recognize Mae Jemison doesn't surprise me at all. She was a black female. And so that to that officer, one, she was black, two, she was a female. So she's a, she is subservient to him in his mind uh, right off the bat on two counts. So it, it doesn't surprise me. It, it saddens me that that happened. And, and that's, that's why I say together we've got a, you know, it's, it's not because I'm a former astronaut or because I'm the former NASA administrator. It's because I'm a human being and I want my fellow human beings, white, black, uh, Native American, it doesn't make any difference. We've got to come together and solve these problems that we have because no single one of us or no single group of us is gonna be able to do that.
Absolutely. Um, I would assume that there are countless students uh, in the United States and also around the world who are either in STEM or inspired to go into STEM and you know the space sector yeah. and are simultaneously looking at violence, racism, police brutality in their own homes or in the media. And I, I'm curious if, you know, as someone who has been through seemingly everything that you could have possibly been through in all of your different roles um, and ranks, you know, not advice, but if there's anything that you would tell those students, those people that are just stepping out into STEM, into the world yeah. of space, yeah. what what might help them? Uh, surprisingly, I, I would I would speak to them the way I speak to all students all the time. <laughs> and uh, although I'm a humongous fan of, uh, I like to call it STEAM, although my, my, my daughter and my son are now telling me that I should talk about STEM plus AD, which is science, technology, engineering, math, plus the arts and design. Uh, when David Newman and I were, the, were leading NASA, uh, we always talked about STEAM, uh, technology, engineering, arts, math, and design. But, but I would tell the young people, if you want to be involved in STEM-related work, like NASA, uh, you don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be an engineer. We need communicators. We, we need artists. We need people who think about uh, design, whether it's of a spacesuit or whether it's of the cockpit, uh, the layout of a cockpit. So um, I think there's, there's, there are all kinds of ways for young people to, or not just young people, but people in general who are interested in in the space program or any other science and technology related programs uh, to be involved, whether they think their brain is uh, is science and, and math oriented or not. So uh, I would say follow your passion, whatever whatever it is that turns you on, whether it's writing or whether it's photography or whether it's designing uh, spacecraft or rocket engines or whatever, just follow that passion. And, uh, and, and, and as you do that, uh, take note of the people around you and the people who make it possible for you to have the successes you do. Um, and, and I think you'll find that, that you're in a pretty doggone mixed world. You're in a, a world that's not black and white and it's not just monolithic anymore. The, the companies that do well are companies that are very diverse. Uh, agencies that do well are agencies that are very diverse. And so that's the big thing for young people today is to try to help lead people like me and my generation out of the past and into the future that we all want for our nation and for the world. 